The U.S. Surgeon General has called it an urgent public health crisis, a devastating decline in the mental health of kids across the country. According to the CDC, the rates of suicide, self-harm, anxiety, and depression are up among adolescents, a trend that began before the pandemic. Tonight, we'll take you to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, a community trying to help its kids navigate a mental health crisis. As we first reported in May, Wisconsin has the fifth highest increase of adolescent self-harm and attempted suicide in the country, with rates nearly doubling since before the pandemic. The story will continue in a moment. In the emergency room at Children's Hospital in Milwaukee, doctors like Michelle Pickett are seeing more kids desperate for mental health help. We unfortunately see a lot of kids who have attempted suicide. That is something that we see, I'd say, at least once a shift. Um, once a shift? Oh, oh yes. Yes, unfortunately. Dr. Pickett has worked in the ER for nine years. Is there any group that's not being impacted? No, we're seeing at all kids, you know, who come from very well-off families, kids who don't, kids who are suburban, kids who are urban, kids who are rural. We're, we're seeing it all. The surge of families needing help for their kids has revealed a deficit of people and places to treat them. Across the country, the average wait time to get an appointment with a therapist is 48 days, and for children, it's often longer. What does it say to you that the place they have to come is the emergency room, that there's something wrong with our system? The emergency room should not be the place to go and get you know, acute mental health care when you're in a crisis. We are not a nice, calm environment. But they're desperate. But, yeah, but we, we're there and we see everybody. But I wish there were more places that kids could go to get the help that they need. We just have a couple questions for you to answer on the iPad. To manage the mental health crisis and heavy caseload, Dr. Pickett introduced an iPad with a series of questions that screen the mental health of every child 10 and older who comes to the ER for any reason. Among the questions, have you been having thoughts about killing yourself? And have you felt your family would be better off if you were dead? harsh questions that can be lifesavers to the kids who answer them. We've had four kids that I know of personally that came in for a completely unrelated problem, so a broken arm or an earache or whatever it was, and actually were acutely suicidal to the point where we needed to transfer them to inpatient uh, facility right to then and there. So we're catching kids you know, who are in very much crisis like that, um, but we're also catching the kids that just need help and don't know what to do and haven't really talked about this. According to the CDC, hospital admissions data shows the number of teenage girls who have been suicidal has increased 50 percent nationwide since 2019. I thought it was normal. Sofia Jimenez was one of them. I remember crying every night and not knowing what was going on and I felt so alone. Sophia and her friend Nina Hughes were in eighth grade looking forward to high school when COVID turned their worlds upside down. I've always been a super smart kid and I've always had really good grades. And then as soon as the pandemic hit, I, I failed a class. When I was virtual, I had no motivation to do anything. I would just sit in my room, never leave, and it was like obvious signs of depression. My mental health got really bad, especially my um, eating disorder. I was basically home alone all day. My parents, well, they noticed that I wasn't eating. I would refuse to eat. So then they ended up taking me to the hospital. Sophia had to stay in the hospital for two weeks before a bed opened up at a psychiatric facility. Your generation, like, got hit with this in what's supposed to be kind of a fun, carefree time. What was lost? What did you guys lose during the pandemic? Myself. Yourself. Yeah. I would definitely say there were big pieces of myself that I were definitely lost. I lost friends because we wouldn't see each other. We couldn't go to our first homecoming. I couldn't have an eighth grade graduation. I know that doesn't sound like that big of a deal. But, but it's a big deal when you're in eighth grade. It, yeah. yeah. I feel like if the pandemic hadn't happened at all, a lot of my 
like sadness and like mental problems would not be as bad as they are. It just made everything worse. Are we in crisis mode right now? We are. We are in crisis mode and um, it's scary. Tammy McClough has worked as a child therapist throughout Wisconsin for the last 25 years. I think there was a hope that, you know, we're back in school, the kids are able to see their friends again and play sports, that this would all go away. Has it? No. No, I've noticed that the wait lists are longer, kids are struggling with more anxiety, more depression. So we were in a mental health crisis prior to the pandemic. Did the pandemic accelerate it? I believe so. But we're coming out of the pandemic, but kids have still lost two years. Two years of socialization, two years of education, two years of their world kind of being shaken up. So as we get, quote unquote, back to normal, I think kids are struggling. Even when the pandemic's over, this crisis isn't going to be over. CDC numbers show that even before the pandemic, the number of adolescents saying they felt persistently sad or hopeless was up 40 percent since 2009. There are lots of theories on why, social media, increased screen time, and isolation, but the research isn't definitive. This past March, Tammy McClough was tapped by Children's Hospital to run an urgent care walk-in clinic specifically open Hello. to treat kids' mental health. May I help you guys? We are here to get some help. Open seven days a week from 3 to 9.30, it's one of the first clinics of its kind in the country. You know, what's going to work for you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what's going to work for you? So when they come to our clinic, we assess them and we provide them with a therapy session. So we give them some interventions. We give them like a plan, an action plan. The plans are catered to each child's situation. Actionable things families and kids can do while they look for a doctor or facility to make room for them. How long have the wait lists been to get help? Normally you're put on, you're scheduled an appointment within a few months. And then months? I know, yeah. And then if you want a child psychiatrist, that you're looking at like months to a year. How important is it to get them help when they need it immediately? As days go on, the symptoms get worse. If you have a depressed child, you know, maybe they started out where they were feeling depressed, and then as the days goes on, they're suicidal. So it really, you really do need to get that help and that support right away. You move backwards. 11-year-old Austin Bringer desperately needed that support during the pandemic. He's a fifth grader at Roosevelt Elementary School in Milwaukee. How old were you when the pandemic hit? Yeah, I was nine. I was still going to school, but then I kept hearing on the news in the car, just like pandemic, stay put, quarantine, 14 days. When they first said, hey, you don't have to go to school, what was your reaction at that moment? Heaven. But then I realized it's the complete opposite. Opposite, because like millions of school-age kids, Austin was forced into remote learning for more than a year and disconnected from friends. It was like this shut-in, like, the only way you could see people is through, like, phones or your family that you live with. That isolation took a toll on Austin, who was already struggling with news that his parents were getting a divorce. And that's when I think everything just started to magnify. He, you know, he was always asking to see his friends. We couldn't... And I remember there was one moment that he was just on the floor, like, kicking and punching the air, just, it, but couldn't describe why he was upset. Unable to vent with friends and without access to in-person therapy, Austin's mother, Melissa, says his world began closing in on him. Felt like he was interacting less and just kind of withdrawing into himself and spending a lot of time by himself. And I went to go tuck him in, and he said, Mom, I'm having suicidal thoughts. And he was how old? He was nine. And, like, I was kind of like, I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I just imagine myself going through all these things, like jumping from a building and, like, taking a knife from my kitchen mm -hmm. and ending my life. It was, it was over 50 of them that just flooded my mind. I don't really know if it was from all the, like, just antisocialness. 
and not being able. It also felt like with the divorce came a lot of yelling, and it felt like my parents didn't need me anymore. Just really hard to think about that moment. Mm -hmm. Desperate, Melissa called Austin's pediatrician, who referred her to outpatient therapists and inpatient psychiatric programs, only to be told there were long waiting lists and no beds. All this stuff is racing through my head, and then for them to say, well, there's no beds right now. And I'm like, how am I going to keep him safe? In an effort to try and keep kids safe, Wisconsin is trying another approach that's being adopted in other parts of the country. Hello, how are you guys? 17 pediatric clinics across southeastern Wisconsin have incorporated full-time therapists inside their offices. Look who I got! <laughs> offering mental health screenings and treatment as part of routine care. Okay, so let's start with our assessment. Dr. Brilliant Nimmer was the first pediatrician in Milwaukee to create a therapist's office inside her office. You're saying we're here together, we're going to all work on this together, not we can't help you, go see somebody else. Exactly. And so having the therapist in our clinic to really just have, be on a team together, discuss that patient and family together, to bounce ideas off of each other, because we both know them so well, um, is so much better for patient care. Dr. Nimmer's clinic treats an underserved community where families typically struggle to get mental health help. Therapists have treated more than 500 kids here since the pandemic started. I think as pediatricians and primary care providers, like we can no longer just solely say, you know, mental health providers, you're the only ones that are gonna be taking care of our patients in regards to mental health. Like this is now something that we need to be doing too. Austin Bringer's pediatrician now has a therapist in her office, too. Their family was fortunate to find regular outpatient therapy for his depression. How do you feel now? I don't know. It's much better than before. Everything's going up in my life, and knowing that, like, I'm friends with everyone in my class, I'm building better social life. It's fun to just know there's others that like the same things as me. Austin, it's not an easy thing to talk about all this stuff. Why did you agree to tell us about what you've been through? Because the world needs to. The world needs to know. Mental health and stuff like that needs to be treated or bad stuff could happen. If you're going through that by yourself, try and contact someone you know, like your friend, your family. And talk about it. Yeah. Find mental health resources for kids and families in crisis at 60minutesovertime.com.